Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, April 22nd, 2019. We are almost in May, guys. This is crazy. I hope everyone had a good Easter weekend. It is now Taurus season in Western astrology. So happy birthday to all my Taurans out there. Starting today in Eastern astrology, we are still in Aries season. We're actually not going to be hitting Taurus season until about the 15th or 16th of May. Um, so that's why you hear me say often, I, I am a, uh, a Taurus in Western astrology, but I'm an Aries in Eastern astrology. Anyway, we're not gonna get into all that, but I do wanna wish my uh, Western followers a very happy birthday. Yes, and also to the Aries out there. I didn't, I guess I did, but anyway. Happy birthday to you, Aries. If you're a Western, if you're an Easterner, you just, we're still in your, in your sign. Okay, anyway, um, I hope everyone had a really great weekend. It was a holiday here in the U.S. and in the U.K. and in uh, any other, um, any other countries that celebrate Easter. Um, yeah, so we're just going to get into the energies for today. Keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you are interested in looking at your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me and I will help you get set up. My email is in the description box below. Yes. Also keep in mind that time and energy, well, time is an illusion and energies are fluid. Okay. These messages are meant to be timeless. So whenever you watch them, whenever you're guided to watch them, that is the right time for you. And, um, this message has been put out there with intentions to bring some insight to everybody possible. Okay. Even if it's just a small little piece, hopefully it brings you some sort of clarity that can help you moving forward in your day-to-day -day life. Yes? All right, guys. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Monday, April 22nd, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so I'm seeing pink and I'm seeing yellow. Pink is a color of unconditional love. And what I'm getting, uh, and also divine love, and what I'm getting from that is this is absolutely an extension of the energies, um, the energies that were surrounding us, that were present during Easter weekend. Um, with that is coming through, that's coming through with some yellow here. And to me, often when I'm channeling and, you know, I'm asking for guidance and I see yellow, that means that spirit's giving me a sign that clarity is coming through. Um, yellow can speak to, you know, the solar plexus, which translates into like the willpower um, it also represents, it's a joyful energy, exuberant, vibrant, fun, happy, exciting. It also represents the sun. Um, and, you know, the sun is, it, it, the sun illuminates, right? So that's where I get the illumination from. But this has a lot to do with what happened with uh, Notre Dame burning. Um there is a lot of, cl uh, and I'm really not trying to, excuse me, guys. I'm really not trying to get into that. Um, you know, there are plenty of people that are putting things out there, and it's not out of fear. It's just I don't, I personally don't really feel like I have any insight on it, so I'm not trying to make an official video of it. But there's a message coming through with these colors so far about the clarity as to what is really necessary for us to be of service, to worship. And I just saw 444 on the counter. So the angels are encouraging me to say this. So I'm gonna go ahead and then we're, I'm just gonna let it go and we'll see what comes out through the cards. But there is a form of clarity that's coming through 
um, that is necessary for us to understand as we evolve, as we grow, as we ascend. And that has to do with what we actually really need in order to feel our connection with Source, with the Divine, with Jesus, with um, God, with Mother Mary, with any, any, any religious figures that, you know, you identify with, okay? Um, they're, they're literally saying you don't need churches, you don't need um, steeples, you don't need, you don't really need the physical things. All you really need is your connection inward, inside. Um, there is a, there is a, there's, and I guess what's influencing this, other than the fact that spirit is just pulling it through is, is I'm, I'm opening up myself as a channel. Um, so spirits bring the message through, but another, I guess another thing that influenced this was I was watching, um, Amanda Ellis and she was talking about it and I was watching it yesterday actually, as I was running around doing stuff. And so I was just kind of listening and there was a similar message. Hmm. Excuse me. It was a similar message. So you might want to, if this is intriguing you, if this is piquing your interest, you might want to check that out. It's, it, it's, it has the title Notre Dame in it. Um, and so, you know, it's not hard, it's not hard to find. And it's one of her most recent videos, but source spirit is working on getting us to detach from the physical element of things so much and start really connecting inward which is everything that we've been going through on this ascension process lately for those of us that have actually been you know really doing a lot of the work you know that's what it is and eventually we're going to be getting others to do go within and do that inner work and find that connection within because everybody has that connection within us already um, it's about retraining our minds to understand that we don't need the physical elements, the external elements, because it's all within anyway, okay? All right. Whew. So, Monday, April 27th. 27th? No, 22nd. <laughs> April 22nd. 2019. I'm gonna give this one more shuffle and then we'll see what we've got. Monday, April 22nd. Here we go, guys. April 22nd, 2019. Best messages, please, Spirit. Mm, best messages, please. Monday, April 22nd. Monday, April 22nd. 2019. Okay. All right, guys. Here we go. Overall energy, we have the Five of Wands. Okay. Conflict, confusion, um, all right. I, I'm going to go ahead and say so far that this has something to do with a relationship because we have the Page of Swords here with the Emperor. <laughs> and then we have the Page of Cups. There is some sort of... Someone's being watched. Someone's being watched by a masculine energy. And there's conflict. There's a desire to apologize. There's a, a desire to reconcile. Page of Cups. Page of Swords. Someone's trying to figure out how to do it. But you see here, there's this Five of Wands here. Now, it's not the Five of Swords, which is good. But it is the Five of Wands. There is enough conflict here. Oh, goodness, you know. That's interesting. Um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll say that in a second. But there's enough conflict here to keep someone at bay. And it doesn't even feel like it has to be all that much. 
this five of wands here because like i said it's not the five of swords it's the five of wands so it's literally just a, maybe like a conflict of interest or a difference of opinion um there could be a lot of other people involved in the situation that are putting their two cents in that's just making things all kinds of jumbled and, and convoluted and just crappy <laughs> okay but you have someone here that is trying to figure out how to approach this situation and how to reconcile page of cups okay page of cups is also a dreamer energy so someone could be dreaming up a way to reach out well well whoa you guys four of wands six of pentacles wheel of fortune and the devil in reverse good gracious this <laughs> holy shit this level or excuse me this lineup right here four of wands six of pentacles wheel of fortune and the devil in reverse i feel like this is energy many of us have been waiting for for a very long time what do you mean by that eric well you have union here four of wands you also have marriage commitment, you have a family, you have a home space, okay? There could be a change in residence coming for some of you. You could be gaining some sort of uh, marriage proposal or commitment reposal, uh, reposal, proposal. Someone may be in, in, this could be off in the near future. I'm not saying this is right away, but I'm saying this is like the energy that it feels like something is building towards. Maybe you could receive an invitation to move in with or cohabitate with someone. Maybe you could be the one, um, asking that somewhere in the near future you have the six of pentacles here this is the balance between give and take what i feel like is happening here uh, reciprocity yes i feel like someone most likely a masculine energy i'm just going to say energy i'm not going to say gender whoever represents the masculine balance in whatever relationship we're talking about here it doesn't have to just be romantic okay it could be a friendship. It could be a business partnership. It could be uh, a co-woke. Co <laughs> I was literally just about to say a co-woker, not <laughs> not a co-worker, but a co-woker. Okay, so I'm gonna actually take that as it is. This could be someone that's on some sort of similar path as you, um, enlightenment-wise. Um, but it, I mean, it definitely could be someone, yeah, a co-woker, someone that is, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, coin that one. <laughs> I love it. Um, but this is someone that, this is the energy that I was, that I was talking about, uh, sometime last week about how this person or this connection that could be coming forward towards you, they don't have to be on the same vibratory level as you, but they do they would need to harmonize with you, okay? So one may be a slightly higher than the other, but because of the nature of your vibrations, you harmonize with each other still, So which means that you can get along. So in essence, that would be a co-woker, okay? Something drastic has changed or potentially is still in the process of changing, but the progress that it's made so far is that this change is like, is, is taking, it's sticking, okay? You have the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune has been coming out quite a bit lately, all right? Uh, over the last, we'll say two weeks, this Wheel of Fortune has been talking about changes in karmic cycles. Now, I am not the only one that's been talking about this, okay? There has been lots of talk um, within the reader community about changes in karmic cycles, big changes in karma. Um, I've been speaking to it specifically as stepping off the karmic hamster wheel. And that's definitely what you can see here with the devil and in reverse and uh, the wheel of fortune. Um, the, the devil here representing codependency, addiction, toxicity, 
Um, and you can even see the devil as the karmic cycles that we have been reincarnating um, over and over again to deal with and yet never have been able to fully clear it out or clear it up. You could see that as a representation of what the devil represents in um, attachment, um, not being not being able to free yourself or thinking that you can't free yourself, thinking that you're, you're trapped forever, but that's not ever the case, okay? You may feel like, you may have felt like you are bound by karma in a way that goes against your free will. That is not the case. Um, that was something I always thought as I, as I was going through, you know, my own process and evolution and whatnot, up until I got to here, this point recently, and I started to realize, wait a second, no, I do, even though, yes, I came down here, we all came down here to fulfill some sort of karmic debt, right? That's just one facet of why we've come here. Um, and if things don't work out, if it doesn't happen, if it doesn't work out the way you want it to, you feel or like you're bound to, you're destined to, you're required to come back and do it again. However, you do have the ability to release yourself from the situation. You can say, whether it's to the person face to face or whether it's in your mind telepathically, whatnot, whatever, you do have the right to say, look, this is not working and I'm just gonna let this go. I wish you all the best, but this just isn't working for me and I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so you release, you. but see, here's the trick. You have to release the resentment. You have to release any of the feelings. You have to release with love, okay? You can't, you can't say, look, screw you. I'm done with this. I never want to see you, you again. Bye. And expect the karma to just not exist. No. You actually do have to release the karma and say, I, I, I release you from this. I release myself from this with love, with gratitude. I wish you all the best moving forward in your journey. And that's it. It's literally all it takes, okay? And that's actually what's been happening here. That would be the devil in reverse for some of you. Now, for others of you specifically, now, okay, that was in terms of, we'll say, the counterpart or the feminine to this situation. Now, there's one thing I wanna say moving forward this whole masculine feminine thing and the counterpart situation. Um, I feel compelled to say that just because, you know, you have um, a man and a woman that are seen as, in, in physical form, that are seen as counterparts, doesn't mean you can't have two of the same gender that embody both sides or that embodies one embodies more than the other right and so even with that point you have you can have a woman that embodies more of the masculine energy and a man that embodies more of the feminine energy and when it comes to that counterpart balance it has nothing to do with gender it's really just about the energies and how we balance each other out so you could even still have two men two women or a man and a woman that really do have that balance of masculine and feminine within them individually but there's still a slight what's the word i'm looking for a slight um increase or there's a slight uh uh the one side is a little is a little more dominant than the other so like masculine could be a little more, more dominant in in one and feminine could be a little more dominant in the other but if you were to look at quick glance you might feel like they're both quite balanced okay Th this is a spectrum it really is a spectrum so i don't want anyone to get discouraged when i'm talking about masculine and feminine or male and female it really has nothing to do with the gender it's all about the energies okay so one side of this equation that we're talking about here we're talking i'm gonna say, we're gonna go ahead and say the feminine side or the counterpart to whoever this individual is that's represented by the emperor okay the counterpart to this emperor is the one that has 
released the karmic energy and stepped off the hamster wheel. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to say that there wasn't there was no resentment, no anger. Okay. The anger, the, the bad feelings that this person was experiencing is what helped propel them forward, is what helped them say, I am absolutely done with this. I am not doing this anymore. Okay. But then that took some time to heal from and freedom, a good sense of freedom was found. Now, in this individual, the one that's represented by the emperor, you can either see this as the counterpart to the other person we're talking about, or you can see this as the masculine to this feminine, okay? Now that this counterpart or feminine has stepped off the, ca the hamster wheel, now they had a chance to really release the devil energy themselves. Why? Because that counterpart that was involved in the situation, even if it was just energetically, even if it was, let me say that again, even if it was just energetically. So you two didn't have to have any involvement with each other whatsoever in the physical world. But energetically, you two were still giving into the, into the situation, right? Well, now that this counterpart or feminine has pulled his or her energy away and has completely removed themselves from the karmic hamster wheel, now this individual has a much greater chance or ability of releasing this devil energy because the other the counterpart was helping to facilitate the attachment to this devil energy even if the connection was still just being fed energetically not physically okay so this is basically the separation we've all been really looking for it took a long time to get here it took a long time to get here. So now this emperor is wanting something new, is seeking something new, is potentially seeking rec uh, uh, reconciliation, is seeking out their dreams, wish, their wish fulfillment, is balanced, is ready for some sort of union, some sort of marriage, or, or is in the process of getting ready energetically. And, and, and this really does feel like it's mostly on an energetic level, okay, which is where everything starts. So this is beautiful, all right? You just have to give it time to really manifest, but it's coming is balanced, is ready for a harmonious partnership, is ready to have a balance between give and take here, Six of Pentacles. Wow, that's really beautiful. And that's a welcome sight. <laughs> that really is a welcome sight. Now, to the to the masculine or the whoever is represented by the emperor here. Oh, oh well, first of all, what I want to say is this also could be with that whole thing that I was talking about about the um, you know, the balance between masculine and feminine, and having both. This also could be the counterpart that is in this energy. Many of us have been working on that balance between masculine and feminine energy. Now, I am feeling like this is mostly the, 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 those who represent or those who identify with masculine energies the most. But it really could be the other side, the opposite side of the spectrum, or those who identify with the feminine energies the most could also be feeling this. Because I know many of us, at least for those of us that I have been channeling for on this channel, we have been working on balancing masculine and feminine energy. So... That's where, that's where the seeking of the dreams is coming through, for the most part. Not all, because even those that are really are just, are mostly in the masculine energy are seeking this too. But from that point of view, I'm also feeling reconciliation wanting to come through. Okay. Um, now, for the feminine counterpart, or the counterpart to whoever this emperor is, um, you really are, you've taken control of your life anyway, for the most part, you really have. And you've been living from that place for some time. Okay, so that's a good thing. But for the masculine side, it looks like you're really starting to take control also. Now this five of wands though, the conflict. Honestly, I'm gonna be dead ass with you guys right now. 
that five of wands feels so petty and insignificant <laughs> compared to I'm hearing divine counterpart. So compared to whatever this connection is between some people here, that pettiness, that five of wands energy is so insignificant. It's so insignificant. Like it's, yeah, it's a barrier. It's a blockage, but it like literally you could, I feel like you could step up to that barrier, that wall and just poke it, just just give it like the smallest insignificant push and it'll just topple over. And that's because we've grown so much. We've grown so much that we've outgrown those barriers. Does that make sense? Like, I'm almost seeing it as at one point we were toddlers and you know, we had our playpen to play in and now we've grown and we're taller than this playpen. And you remember, you remember how when you were a little kid and things used to tower over you and you're like, whoa, and like you never thought you would ever be able to like be as big as that. And it was like the biggest thing you had ever seen in your life. And then you grow up and I don't know, 10 years later, 12 years later, you go back to that same spot and you're like, oh my God, do you remember when that was towering over me? It's that kind of feeling. That's how insignificant that five of wands feels in comparison to what's really going on here. The big changes that are coming through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we're gonna use the Epic Tarot and we're gonna get some clarity here. I definitely wanna clarify the Emperor specifically the devil with the wheel of fortune, and then the four of wands and the six of pentacles. We're gonna start with the We're gonna start with the devil energy, actually. The devil and the wheel of fortune. I'm gonna give this one more shuffle here. I just chuckled because I just saw 2717, which is three things, which is one, the number 27, which has been stalking me for years now. I was still with my ex-husband when I started seeing 27. Actually, that's not even true. My grandmother died. This one, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but this card that I've had up on my, my table forever, this is a eulogy card from my grandmother that she, when she died uh, for her, when her, uh, uh, that I got at her, um, you, uh, her, wow, her funeral. And she died December 27th, 2007. And years later, I started seeing 27 everywhere. Um, and I just saw 2717. So it's the number 27. It's also the number 17. It's also the number 717. So that's why I laughed. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are going to, um, we're going to clarify. Let's start with the devil in reverse with the Wheel of Fortune, please. Spirit. Okay. No, oh, that's so beautiful. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, it looks like everything was just clarified there. <laughs> Underneath the deck, we do have the Two of Swords. Okay. So, we're gonna start, okay, we're gonna start here. We have the Sun, Four of Pentacles. The Ace of Cups is in reverse, however, and we have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. This is interesting. This is very interesting. Wow, let me see what else we've got here. Ooh, the Queen of Wands is in reverse on the four. Why are all these, what are all these reversals here? The Ten of Swords in reverse. We have Justice is sideways. What is going on here? The Magician was sideways. What's going on? 
there is a there okay there is a there's strong indecisiveness and even though i was picking up all of that energy that i was picking up before there's resistance like whoa there is resistance like whoa it's almost like i feel like i have to backtrack now because Because underneath the surface, energetically, what I was talking about is what's going on. But on the surface, it's a very different story. So that's why I was saying this is happening energetically, which is where it starts. So that's a good thing. Give me, please give me a moment here. I'm really just trying to understand. What I may do, I think I'm gonna get another deck here and do a little more clarifying because I wanna leave this as it is. So we have we, we were starting with the devil, but a bunch of other stuff came out at the same time. All right, so with the devil, we have the sun, the four of pentacles, and the ace of cups is in reverse. Connecting that with the page of cups, we have the knight of pentacles in reverse. Okay. So in this sense, this could either be two things. This could be many different things. I'm getting a few different scenarios here. The first one, with the fact that we have the Ace of Cups in reverse with the Four of Pentacles and the Sun, the devil here is probably representing some sort of narcissistic energy that's just holding on tight. This could be resistance towards releasing the devil. But I don't feel like that. That's not what I felt like originally. This is really, this is really confusing me, guys. Now this could mean, but the Four of Pentacles is upright, which would be holding on to something, you know. Ace of Cups is here, but it's in reverse. Knight of Pentacles is here, but that's also re in reverse. And I guess the Knight of Pentacles being in, Knight of Pentacles being in reverse is a good thing. I would say so because, you know, that energy of moving slow as molasses is no longer part of the equation. Now here's the thing: you have the Queen of Wands in reverse. which would represent this feminine counterpart, okay? But she's not in a, oh, oh. All right, I get what's happening now. So the masculine is going through the change here, is going through the process of releasing, yeah, with justice, and then the 10 of swords is in reverse. So now the masculine is going through the process of releasing the past coming out of this energy, this energy of the devil, this energy of the knight of pentacles, slow and steady, you know, but that is, but the knight of pentacles here would have been stalling, purposefully stalling. And I really do feel like there, there's a desire to show some sort of love here with the ace of cups, but they're keeping that to themselves. They're holding on to that Four of Pentacles. And I feel like it's so that uh, it's until they have the right form of illumination, until things are clear enough for them with the sun here. I am going to clarify some more. 
We also have the magician is crossed between the Six of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune, which to me is just speaking to, you know, manifestation. I'm getting that pain in my neck again. My neck is... Mm. This is definitely masculine energy. And there's trouble communicating. There's doubt, fear, anxiety, even though we don't have the Nine of Swords or anything like that, or the Eight of Swords. It's kind of what I'm hearing, picking up on. Uh, yes, Spirit is asking me to clarify some more, and I'll use the unicorns. And what I'm going to do, instead of trying to clarify a specific section, I'm just... I'm just going to get a closing message. I'm just going to hold it over the whole spread and let the cards work their magic here. One more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got to, to close out this reading here. So we've got the emperor again. Yep, definitely talking masculine energy. Uh, with the eight of wands this time. So communication, yeah, communication. Like I said, communication is, wa is wanted, is needed, is desired, is required. Communication is required, masculines, in order for you to get this off the ground, to get this moving, to abolish this five of wands energy to get this what is that what is that what is that the star okay to get um to get this queen of wands to turn upright you have to communicate you have to all right underneath the deck jeez oh, underneath the deck is the ten of pentacles and under that is the ten of swords wowie wow wow lessons have been learned here what else do we have? Oof! Good golly. The Four of Wands with the Six of Pentacles again. Look at that, you guys. Knight of Pentacles again. This time it's upright. The Chariot is in reverse, and the Three of Swords is in reverse. These reversals are really confusing me. <laughs> But spirit's saying keep them. Okay. So what I what I guess what's happening here. So the Knight of Pentacles that came out in reverse connected to the devil here is saying that um, the energies of being in uh Gosh, my neck. The energies of being in um, resistance to moving forward, in appearing as the Knight of Pentacles, wanting to do things correctly, um, in without missing anything, that was kind of stalling. Okay. And those energies are no longer, someone's working towards releasing that. Okay, but you do have the Knight of Pentacles again. So it's almost as if now they actually are moving slow and steady towards some sort of communication. Eight of Wands. Now, what I'm getting here with the chariot in reverse, with the three of swords in reverse, is that someone feels passionate, someone is working on balancing themselves in the face of the heartbreak. There is, it's so interesting because this seems kind of con contradictory, but what I'm picking up here is someone is releasing the energies of the Three of Swords, the heartbreak that has been associated with this situation, right? And they're blocked from 
moving forward in the passionate direction that they want to move in, in the direction that is in alignment with their soul. This is the energy of the Five of Wands that I was picking up on, that in the grand scheme of things just really feels super petty and obsolete in, in comparison to what the connection is between the people. Does that make sense? Okay. And then finally you have the six of we have the four four of wands and the six of pentacles again. Union, happy marriage is what I'm hearing. And you know Oh. Oh, 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 my ear is ringing. Um my right, my left ear, excuse me. My left ear is ringing. <laughs> You know what this could mean for some? There is a blockage. There absolutely is a blockage. And that's what was coming through here with this energy, the sun, the four of pentacles, and the ace of cups in reverse on the devil in reverse. Um, someone, maybe the feminine really has moved on and this masculine counterpart is saying, uh, Oh, holy shit, I can't, I know now, I know for a fact now, the sun, four of pentacles, ace of cups in reverse, I know for a fact now that I cannot offer anything to this person any longer, ever again. She just won't let me. And I'm saying that because this six of pentacles and the four of wands is saying to me that you're going to get what you want regardless of who it comes from. That was a really strong energy that came through when I was looking at this again. You're gonna get exactly what you put out into the world. And if you've been putting out energies of love and compassion, balance, reciprocity, you're gonna get that back. And a partner, a counterpart that's going to mirror that or reciprocate that. When it comes to this masculine energy though, this three of swords is exactly what created the energies of putting the chariot in a halt, like an extreme halt. So listen here guys, I'm just giving you the energies. I'm just giving you the energies at they, as they currently stand. You have the ability to change the situation for yourself, okay? But masculines, if you want to rectify the situation, you have to communicate. You have to. There's no if, ands, or buts. You just have to bite the bullet and say something. Try and start a, 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 a conversation. You might feel like you have to walk on eggshells for a little bit, but if this is what you truly want, then... What's wrong with that? Now, counterparts or feminines here, I'm going to be very, very honest with you. You, I understand the situation has hurt you, but the compassion, the lessons in compassion that we've been working on learning here are about to be put into use because this masculine or your counterpart has been going through something that, as well. And that can't be overlooked. Okay. All right. I want to close the reading with some guidance from the whispers of love here. This is really confusing. We go back and forth all the time, but... Okay, here's the deal. Feminines, I'm gonna say this. I'm going to say, con oops. I'm going to say, continue to live your life, all right? I'm not asking you to hold your breath here and wait for someone to communicate with you that has had trouble doing so in the past. 
We're still no longer waiting for anyone. We're no longer, we're still not putting our lives on hold for anybody, okay? But, so continue with your life. And if this manifests with someone else, excellent, it manifests with someone else. But if this person does, excuse me, come back and try and communicate with you, there's a reason for it. Use your intuition, keep your eyes open. If they're still, if they're still acting from sort of narcissistic energy, okay then let it go. But if they're working on being genuine and they follow through with whatever they promise or say they'll do, there's no reason not to reciprocate, all right? Especially if it's a divine partnership, a divine connection. I, I wish I had more clarity on this for you guys because this is really, this is really confusing me right now. Because the energies I was picking up on are a bit contradictory to what the clarification is. So that's why, also why I was saying in the beginning that energetically this is where it's starting. And that's where it needs to start. So you may not really see it. That's why we're getting a bit of a different interpretation when it comes to the clarification or what's on the surface. All right, one more shuffle and then we're going to get our oracle guidance here. I just really hope... I just really hope this is resonating. Um, this is making sense for some of you out there. I wish, and I, 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 I'm like sitting here like maybe I should get another deck and pull more clarifiers, but we got one, two, three, four of the same. Well, I'll say five because we have the 10 of swords underneath the 10 of pentacles here. You see that? That's the 10 of swords. Lessons have been learned, okay? We've got five of the same cards coming out to clarify. Again, so, okay, whatever. Um, I just hope this is resonating with someone. All right, um, closing messages, please, Spirit. Overall, underneath the deck you have card number four. You are limitless. Recognize this truth. You can do anything you choose to do. All right, and that goes both ways. That goes for the masculine who is apprehensive towards coming forward, feels like there's too much conflict um, and that you can't really approach this person. That's not necessarily the case. It's just all in how you do it, okay? Don't expect to roll up on this person, this counterpart of yours, and like demand anything from them. Absolutely not. That will get you shut down. It absolutely, Init like from jump, that will get you shut down. You hopefully have learned that you really cannot control the situation in the way you may have wanted to in the past. The only control you have over the situation is your own self. Now, um, for the feminine or the counterpart to this, em to this emperor or this masculine, you have the ability to do anything as well. So if it turns out that you're staying in alignment with what you truly desire and this manifests with someone else, you are entitled to, you are absolutely allowed to do that. But if you are staying in alignment with what you truly want and this person comes back and tries to communicate with you, you are able to release the past, work on forgiving and open up the lines of communication. You're absolutely able to do that. You have to recognize that truth, okay? Okay. We also have, oh man, card number 49. Actions speak loudly. Express your love through your actions. Masculines, you have to take action. And you're no stranger to that. You're all about action. But you, you take action in other places. And I, said, I think I said this over the weekend edition. It was, I was getting a feeling of someone saying, you can take action, you can go move towards it, all of this other stuff, but when it comes to this connection, you don't do a damn thing. You won't, you refuse to take action. Well, part of what got us here to begin with was the fact that action was not taken or the actions that were taken were 
telling. Why? Because actions speak loudly. Actions speak louder than words. You can talk out your ass all you want, but if you don't back that up with the right action, I mean, you might as well have been speaking gibberish, right? Okay, so finally, now, we have one more card here that has fallen out on the Two of Swords that came out in the first Clarifier deck, which is talking about indecisiveness. And you see, we already just said actions speak loudly, so I'm interested. What is this? Uh, card number 34. Receive with love and appreciation. Receiving something lovingly from others is a way of showing love. This could mean that you masculine uh, or whoever is resonating with the emperor energy that's needing to take action you could need to be grateful in some way show some sort of gratitude in some way for something that this counterpart of yours that you're willing wanting to reconnect with has done for you maybe for this person being there for you um, during some really awful shit could also be for the feminine or the counterpart to this emperor allowing yourself to receive from this person allowing them allowing them to to reciprocate at this point finally reciprocate finally say I would finally be willing to receive some sort of appreciation, some sort of gesture from this person. That's wanting to. I, you can, I mean, it's here. It's convoluted and confusing, but it's here. The Six of Pentacles came out twice, you guys. Twice. And both times it was upright. That is the balance between give and take. Someone is willing to give. They just can't. They just feel like they can't. I don't know feminine or, or counterpart to whoever this person is. I don't know what to tell you to do to open yourself to that reciprocation or to make it known that you're open to the reciprocation. It really just may take this person just biting the bullet and reaching out and just trying. Just try. Send a text message. Send a, 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 a DM. Send... Uh, a, a message on Facebook or something. I don't know, something small, something that's not invasive, something just to like kind of try and break the ice or see where people stand. I don't know. But you have to communicate. You have to. One more quick Oracle message. from the crystal mandala. Interesting. Wow. All right, there it is. <laughs> Already there is value and it's like I'm I'm sitting here like whoa. That's so relevant and I'm wondering maybe I should pull Maybe I should pull another one. And they're saying yes, there is another. Good lord, this is this is definitely gonna be an hour-long message. But you know what? It's coming through, so I'm doing it. One more message. Watch, we're gonna get like five cards now. <laughs> but just to just to close out this reading here. This is a long one. But it is what it is. Alright. One more message, please. There it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Card number 15, Archangel Raphael and Malachite. Grace for the grand gesture. Holy shit, you guys. All right, so we're going to start here. Card number 43, Goddess Matanji and Heliotrope. Already there is value. And this card has come out quite a few times um, as I've been using this deck. It came out recently within like the last, I think it was last week. Maybe the week before. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. It is natural for creative energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. 
Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times, there is something of value from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. If your enthusiasm to move forward in life, I'm sorry, in your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists in your own world along with you. Okay, I want to read this, this paragraph. The first paragraph talks about being innovative and creating something new. The second one says, at other times, it is simply not necessary. And if you do not pause to consider the value of what you are releasing, oh wait, hold on, let me read this sentence first. Sometimes it will be appropriate to, um, I'm just going to read this whole thing. The innovative, creative mind tends to be future-oriented. It can see how things could be. There is excitement for what, is, for what is yet to be and a desire to embrace the new and perhaps a feeling of excitement for what is unusual and stands apart from what has been. This can be healthy and helpful. Newness can bring energy and uplifting change. It is wise, however, to question uh, to... It is... It is wise, however, to not rapidly cast away all that has been all that has been to make space for the new. It is a question of discernment and degree. Sometimes it will be appropriate to take extreme measures measures to pure to purge the past. At other times, it is simply not necessary. And if you do not pause to consider the value of what you are releasing, you may lose valuable resources that will support your future. Perhaps, it's a, perhaps it is an idea that will need to be further worked upon for the full divine brilliance to be revealed, or a connection that already exists and is going to unexpectedly rise up and support you and your divine work in some way. Whether there is an old idea half completed, an opportunity yet not yet acted on, or information not yet taken in and digested, the oracle says that something valuable is right under your nose. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Finally, we're going to go to card number 15, Archangel Raphael and Malachite, Grace for the Grand Gesture. Okay. Ooh, this is a longer one. Here we go. We bring you grace for the grand gesture. Although there are times when even the smallest act, such as choosing to think a positive thought, is enough to transform your world, there also comes a time for the leap of faith, the grand gesture of unconditional trust that will free you from the past and empower the universe to gift you with a new future. The grand gesture is the big step, the willingness to, stay to, to say to the universe, I trust you and I know it is time for life as I have known it to give way for a bigger, bolder experience and I am willing to allow you to lead me into it. You then make an offering which confirms your declaration and empowers the universe to reward the faith you have demonstrated. The grand gesture cannot be forced. If it comes from a place of should or uncertainty, then you are not ready. The grand gesture must be unconditional. It must be something you offer, not for what you can get in return, although the re rewards will be rich, but because you are willing to offer something of yourself in service to love. When it comes from this place, the grand gesture is a trigger for divine grace to express itself in your life in an entirely new way, surpassing all expectations and showering you with blessings. Wow. All right, guys. So there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Thank you again for tuning in. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, go ahead and email me. Yes. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great Monday. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah. Take care. Bye.